Hello students, good afternoon. This is Professor Henderson and today we are going to be discussing chapter 30 on vital signs. So let's look at the student learning outcomes for this chapter. So at the completion of the vital sign chapter, student will be able to discuss the mechanism of thermal regulation, describe the mechanism of heat loss and conservation, discuss the physiological changes associated with fever, list various components of vital signs and appropriate parameters for adult and pediatrics, discuss how cultural and ethnicity impacts blood pressure, identify various techniques to assess an infant's vital sign, delegate vital signs measurements to assistive nursing staff, List some non-pharmacological methods to treat fever. List pharmacological approach to treat fever and demonstrate how to measure vital signs and proper documentation. So as we know that it is the responsibility of the registered nurse to measure patient vital sign and to analyze these findings. However, an RN can delegate to certified nursing assistants and PCAs to check a patient vital sign, but it is the sole responsibility of the RN to analyze the findings. So let's say you are the nurse on a busy med surge unit and you had delegated to one of your PCA to measure Mrs. Jones' vital sign. She checked it and she came and she said it's um, the respiratory rate is 27 and her temperature is 101. So what is your responsibility as the RN on the unit? Are you gonna take these um, number as face value or you are going to go and check it yourself to validate these findings? So then you have an accurate measurement and you can um, call the doctor and relate these findings to the doctor. The equipment, make, it's the responsibility of a nurse to use the appropriate equipment. So use the appropriate cuff. Let's say you have to take a blood pressure on a patient that is obese, her arm is quite large, you're not going to use the same regular blood pressure cuff because that will alter the results. So use appropriate cuff. Also, it's important to ask your patient if they have any type of um, implantable devices such as a, um, a pacemaker or they had a mastectomy, or they have any access sites, such as a shunt or a AV, AV fistula for dialysis. It is contraindicated to check someone's vital sign who have an access site, or to even do venipuncture on that arm. Also know the patient baseline, so you can compare and contrast the findings. How about the environment? Make sure the environment is calm and quiet. Collaborate your findings with others. Use of medication, certain medications also, such as beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, these medications also affect your blood pressure and your heart rate. So make sure you ask your patient, do you take antihypertensive medications? What, what time have you taken it? What is the name of the medication? The milligrams of the medications. So these are all assessments. Also um, analyze the results. Instruct patient of their, of, their, um, of their readings and document it appropriately. So we have a case study here. Ms. Caborn is a 26-year-old school teacher. Her maternal grandparents immigrated to America from Brazil. 
She smokes one pack of cigarettes a day and and has smoked since she was 16 years old. She is 20 pounds overweight. She made an appointment because she started to have headaches and frequently felt tired. Do you think Miss Cabone is having a stroke? If so, what are the signs and symptoms of a stroke? How can you educate Miss Caburn about her smoking practice? Do you tell her to quit? She has been smoking from since 16. What is your recommendations? Do you tell her to reduce the number of cigarettes per day? Do you rec recommend smoking cessations such as gum, nicotine gums, and patches? What are some healthy lifestyle can you educate Miss Caburn about? Making healthy food choices, avoiding fatty foods and eat fresh fruits and vegetables. Also um, incorporate an exercise plan into her routine. Body temperature physiology. As we know, there are various sites in the body that you can monitor someone's um, vital signs or their temperature. You can check an oral temperature, rectal temperature, axillary, tympanic, temporal. These are various sites for checking someone's temperature. It's important to ask someone before checking their temperature. Have you had something hot or cold to drink? If they had something hot or cold, then you'll have to wait 20 to 30 minutes before checking their um, temperature because it might alter the findings. What is the um, the most accurate um, site to check a temperature? The rectal is the most accurate site. Acceptable range of temperature. So 98.6 to 104.4. And if you convert that into centigrade, it's 36 to 38. That's the normal temp oral temperature. However, as you know, with geriatric patient, these numbers may differ. In geriatric patient, if you check their temperature and it's a 97, that's normal for them, or a 96. So the most accurate measure of measurements, so what is the most accurate method of measuring temperature? We said it's the rectal. Do you think it is beneficial to take an oral temperature on a patient with facial trauma? No, it's contraindicated to take um, oral temperature on a patient that has um, facial trauma or a patient with seizure, a patient with CVA. What body system regulates temperature? We know it's the hypothalamus, that's our thermostat. Vital signs ranges. This chart is in your Potter and Perry textbook. So these are some normal um, vital sign measurements for an adult versus an, um, a pediatric patient. So capnography, the normal capnography is 35 to 45. So what is capnography? So capnography is the um, the concentration of partial um, of partial pressure of CO two in the respiratory gases. Partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the respiratory gases. Body temperature regulation, as you know, the hypothalamus, we already said that, is the, um, is the main system that regulates your body temperature, and it's the thermostat of your body. So a person with brain trauma or a person with um, spinal cord injury will have difficulty in regulating their temperature. Um, mechanism of heat loss. It is very critical that you understand these different uh, mechanisms of heat loss. It's through radiation, 
conduction, convection, and evaporization. So what is radiation? Radiation is the transfer of heat from a surface of one object to another without direct contact. So what is an example of radiation in conserving of heat loss? Removing blankets and extra clothing from your patient, that is one example of radiation, how you can conserve heat loss. How about conduction? Conduction is direct contact with a cooler object. An example of conduction is the application of various layers of clothing to prevent heat loss. That's an example of conduction. And convection has to do transferring of heat away from air. For example, if you have a fan blowing cooler air, that's an example of convection. And evaporization is the loss of um, water through your skin, through evaporization. I think your book said is about 600 to 900 mLs that is evaporized through your skin. Um, how about behavioral control? So we know patients that are unconscious or patients that um, have cognitive impairment, they're unable to, um, to regulate their temperature because they're unconscious. They, may, they can't do something about it. So they're unable to, um, to regulate their body temperature because they're unconscious or they're cognitively impaired. So it's your responsibility to um, conservation of heat loss because they're not able to, you know, put extra clothing or remove extra clothing. I have an NCLEX style question here. What is the most appropriate definition of vital signs? Signs and symptoms of a disease, indication of body function, a part of human composition, physiological and psychological functioning. So the correct answer will be indication of body function. So it tells you how well your body is maintaining homeostasis. So factors affecting body temperature. We have various factors here. So you know age, the very young and the very old, it's at risk for altercation in temperature. We know that. So providing a baby's born, you provide a warm blanket for them to maintain thermal regulation, prevent um, loss of heat. How about exercise? So as one exercises, it increases their blood supplies and the breakdown of fat. It also increases their metabolism and heat production. How about the circadian rhythm? So the circadian rhythm is um, something... Um, it's your sleep-wake cycle over a period of 24 hours. So it's your lowest body temperature changes. So in the early in the morning, your temperature is very low from 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. So working night shift, that will alter your circadian rhythm, right? How about hormonal, hormonal changes or hormonal level? During men, menstrual cycle, you're also your temperature have a tendency to go up one degree. So it's a good predictor for pregnancy also. Or someone's trying to get pregnant, they always uh, monitor their, um, their temperature during that peak time. How about stress? 
stress also affect your body 